Hey everyone, so today we're talking about timing on the letter style series of John Deere's, mainly like your ABG uh, and HN things. So I was installing the governor fan shaft assembly onto the tractor. Um, that's kind of a key moment in the timing of the tractor. So I thought I would just go through while it's all set up and lined up and talk about everything that you can check if you think your tractor is out of time or when, when you're installing things to make sure it is in time and so on. So we'll talk first here about this governor. Um, actually, let's go back a step and talk about the flywheel and crankshaft position first. So a few weeks back when I was installing the crankshaft, I talked about how it mates with the um, the gear for the camshaft. So the camshaft runs across the top of the engine here and there's a gear over here that interfaces with the governor but then it also interfaces with the crankshaft. So let me show you that down here. Alright so we're looking down in the engine bay here you can see the camshaft on the right and the gear there now, I didn't take that out of this tractor, but that gear, the way the holes are uh, lined up onto the actual camshaft, it can only go on one way. So you know that that is right. Then there is a specific mating of the crankshaft that you need to get when you install the crankshaft. So if you actually look, there's a dot right there. You see that white dot? Um, when you spin the crankshaft around, it will meet with a dot um, somewhere else on, on that gear. I'll show you a picture here of when I was installing uh, the crankshaft. All right, so there you go. I didn't want to critique on my video. So I spun the crankshaft, and you can see that the tooth on the crankshaft, which is the lower part of the figure, with that dot on it, is lined up with the kind of uh, female tooth if you want to call it the inlet on the camshaft gear and you see that dot there. Now I'm going to turn the uh, uh, flywheel back and the crankshaft back so that number one cylinder is at top dead center. All right so again the mating of the crankshaft gear and the camshaft gear is at a different position from what I'm about to tell you. So you line that up and then you rotate the crankshaft so it's uh, number one cylinders at top dead center, which is what I have here. Now your flywheel, you want to install this where there are typically two markings on the flywheel, left hand impulse and left hand exhaust open. When you install the flywheel with the crankshaft at number one, left hand, top dead center, you want left hand, left hand impulse to be at the three o'clock position. Now, I can't squeeze in here with the camera, but on this tractor, so you'll see actually there's a dot there, you can see it on the camera. That has to line up with this flange on the, the cover. Now on other tractors, you know, this cover's different, and, but you'll see a little notch, a little groove in the cover that tells you where that is. Now what also helps is, I think it'll be hard for me to show you, but there is a set screw on the crankshaft that makes sure that you can only put the flywheel on in one position. And I can tell just by looking at the splines that this groove is bigger. And let me see if I put the flash on, if you can see it. Yep, you can see the set screw in there, okay? Now I don't have this flywheel all the way on right now, it's just kind of sitting here, but there's your set screw. If you don't have this set screw, like I said, you know just by the fact of uh, this needs to be at 3 o'clock, exactly. And with the splines on the crankshaft should get you close. Otherwise, also another way, so on the back side is that key for the, for the oil slinger. Let's see if we can show it here. Right there on the flywheel so that i mean when you go to set the um the oil slinger 
because when you go to put the flywheel on you got to make sure that that groove in the oil slinger the receiver for that key is in the right spot it's six grooves off from where the set screw is so here's your set screw and and the grooves on the actual crankshaft one two three four five six so right here is where that key is so you got to make sure when you slide this on that the oil slinger uh, receives that key and it goes all the way on otherwise you won't have oil uh, to your crankshaft and that that won't be good all right so at that point you have your crankshaft time to your camshaft you've got your flywheel set and positioned on the crankshaft correctly and why that is important is this is not just a perfectly symmetrical flywheel because if you look on the back side there is weight in the back of the flywheel that's also a very important factor and indicator if for some weird reason uh, there might be flywheels out there that don't have the impulse marking but the weight on it goes exactly at three o'clock also and, and this is important for balance if you have any sort of balance issue the weight could be off on this or the clutch driver which is my next part that we'll talk about all right so the clutch driver and the clutch is can be kind of a tricky thing but not really there's multiple things you can look for first off when you go to take apart the tractor the easiest thing is clean it up and typically you'll find that there are is an arrow marking on the end of the crankshaft and on the clutch driver okay um, this one doesn't seem to have it may not have been on the early ones but look for it look real hard clean it up put some cleaner on it and sometimes if you look hard enough you'll find the markings and they got to be paired up this style of tractor the, one of the splines is kind of cut out and there's actually a set screw in the clutch driver so basically you can't screw that up either but the other important thing the other way to know if you don't have a set screw and you don't have markings i talked about the flywheel uh that weight being at perfectly three o'clock position when you were looking at it you know so in this case it's facing towards the back of the tractor this weight on the clutch driver must be the opposite it must be completely forward so when you're looking at the clutch driver it's at three o'clock when you're looking at the flywheel from the other side it's at three o'clock that ensures balance in these engines if it is off any little bit you will feel it in these tractors it'll wobble it'll it'll uh yeah have a vibration to it so that's very important so again working our way forward we got camshaft crankshaft flywheel clutch driver and the last important thing is the governor so the governor you know has this gear in here that i said interfaces with that camshaft gear when with all of this in that position where you're at top dead center left hand impulse marking clutch driver right this slot on the governor should be perfectly horizontal so when you set down the governor and set it and mesh it with that gear on the camshaft this should be pretty darn close to horizontal if it's one tooth off when you go to put your magneto on you're going to have to adjust it maybe even to its max if you got it too far off it just it won't be timed right it won't fire right because this is timing when your magneto fires and that you know is supposed to be based on where your camshaft is and where the crankshaft is and everything else that's why this is kind of the last bit and very important um, for uh, setting up the timing on your tractor and then i guess i'll go ahead and do one more thing here and actually talk about installing of the uh, magneto all right so i'll try and show this the best i can so I have my Magneto here. Uh, this tractor, when I got it, had a Model C on it. I think um, wasn't the original. Original was a AP 477. I was potentially dumb enough to buy that because apparently what I've been told, you uh, can't get parts for it. But anyway, so I'm gonna put this on here. I rotated it around. I made sure I got spark. Um, 
I've got one plug wire here, so I have it set to fire on the number one cylinder, your left hand cylinder. Uh, the unique thing about this magneto is unlike the later Wycos where it would fire, you know, alternately every click, this doesn't. So click one will be fire one, click two will be fire two, and then third click will be nothing, fourth click will be nothing, then back to one. So kind of interesting. Um, so remember we've got the drive slot horizontal and I am going to line those teeth up and I want to rotate this until I hear it click. And whenever I get close I'm actually going to get my bolt in. And why I want to do that is because once I get it where I want it I want to be able to quickly tighten it down before you know I lose it. All right, here we go. Son of a biscuit. Well guys, I apologize. The magneto is giving me a little bit of trouble. It has me a little worried. But anyway, so with the magneto set and ready to fire on number one cylinder, you can test it with a, a plug and a wire. Um, when you put it on, the way the slots will be, it'll be sideways and you keep rotating it, get that bolt started. And then as soon as it clicks, go just a smidge forward, just, just a scotch, and then lock it down. Um, for some reason, when I kept doing that, I don't know if it's because it wasn't spinning fast enough as I was adjusting it or what, the spring in there is getting weak, but it, it wasn't clicking for me. But now that I have it on and I'm turning it over, it's co consistently clicking and giving me spark. So I don't know if the spring in there is just too weak or what, we'll have to see when um, this thing actually gets to running again. You know, it ran fine, uh, it was a great magneto, um, but it may be that, you know, I've had it sitting the last nine months or so. Uh, so anyway, that concludes the timing on these tractors. Uh, I don't believe I made any mistakes in uh, describing that. Um, I think that's all of the tips and tricks that I could think of, like I said, because sometimes you may not have the features that I was talking about, so understanding that. So hopefully that'll help you timing your magneto like this. Um, you know, I've done it with all three of my tractors, and every time I've been able, like it's been real fine-tuned where I could idle it down as long as the carb was good, um, that just doing exactly what I said, let it click, move a scotch forward, lock it down, and that's always just been flawless for me. So hopefully you guys learned something. Uh, let me know if there's any other tips or tricks to the trade. And uh, I guess I did forget to mention one thing. Uh, I did create an email. So if any of you guys have questions that might be lengthier or uh, you know need to discuss problems or anything like that, you can email me at danielfarmchannel at gmail.com. I'll put it in the bottom of the video. And uh, yeah, I look forward to hearing from anyone if you have anything or need help. You know, that way you can send pictures or something that, that you don't, uh, that you can't do on YouTube in the comments and things. So be interested in seeing what you guys have and what you're working on. So later.